In this video, we're going to talk about varactor diodes, also known as varicap diodes. The common schematic symbol uh, is this, and it looks like an ordinary diode symbol, except that there are two lines for the cathode. A varactor diode, or varicap diode, is a, essentially a voltage variable capacitor. Now, all diodes exhibit this behavior, but varactors are really kind of uh, optimized for lower loss and higher Q. So let's talk about how they work. They're typically used uh, in reverse bias, because uh, if you look at the structure of a diode, it's just a P and N type material. The P material has got some excess holes or positive carriers. Uh, the N type has got excess electrons. And when you apply a negative bias or a reverse bias to the diode, what happens is you know, applying a positive bias to the N, it attracts the N charges to this end, and then the negative attracts the P charges. And that leaves a region within the junction of the diode that has no carriers at all, so it's kind of like an insulator. So if you think about it, we've got two charged areas separated by an insulator. That is essentially a capacitor. Now the width of that depletion region is a function of the voltage that's applied, or the reverse voltage across the diode. The more voltage you apply, the wider the depletion region, and the lower the, the capacitance. And it's quite, it's really as simple as that. And again, all diodes uh, will work as varactors. In fact, oftentimes you might find people using like a 1N4004 rectifier diode in a varactor application or even LEDs. Uh, they'll all exhibit this behavior. So let's go make some measurements on one to, uh, to see how this behavior works. Now in order to make measurements on the varactor, I had to just build a quick little uh, uh, test circuit here. Uh, these two terminals will connect up to my uh, my LC meter, which I'll show you in a moment. And then I'm hooking up a power supply through a couple of 100K ohm resistors um, to bias up the varactor. I included a relatively large value capacitance here because the capacitance meter is going to measure the series combination of the varactor capacitance, which is only going to be you know, tens of picofarads in series with the, the 0.47 microfarad cap. So the resulting capacitance that is measured between these ter two terminals is going to be virtually equal to the varactor capacitance. The 100K resistors uh, will tend to you know, help keep the power supply out of the equation because uh, they look like it's a fairly high impedance looking down those nodes. But it allows me to apply a bias and, uh, and not really dramatically affect the measurement. So let's go take a look at this fixture and make some measurements. So here's the fixture just mounted to my uh, LC meter. And you can see it's just a piece of uh, copper clad sandwiched into the binding posts. I've got a couple of cuts uh, I made in the circuit board. Uh, mounted a socket here to mount the varactor I want to test. You can see the 0.47 microfarad cap and the 100K resistors to connect up to the power supply. Okay, so uh, I've got the fixture mounted in the uh, LC meter. We'll turn the power on, uh, let it boot and do its self calibration. And we'll switch it into capacitance measurement mode. I've got these two leads hooked up to a variable power supply. Uh, the DMM here is reading that power supply voltage. That power supply is turned off right now. And the oh, 3.7 picofarads or so that we're seeing, that's just the stray capacitance of my fixture. So if I touch the zero button here, I can uh, essentially zero that out. And, uh, and now I can go make measurements. So here's a varactor that I have. It's a Motorola MV209. And if we stick this uh, into the fixture here, uh, I can see about uh, 66 picofarads, but that's without any bias turned on. So let's turn the power supply on here. And uh, I've preset the power supply to about 3 volts, because uh, the data sheet says that uh, this varactor should have about 30 picofarads of capacitance at 3 volts, and it does. Now if I reach up here and start turning the power supply voltage down, reducing the bias that makes the depletion region narrower and the capacitance goes up. So I can see down here at about a volt of bias we're up around 44 picofarads. If we come back up we can see that as I bring up at 2 volts I'm about 35 picofarads and uh, get up to about 3 volts again and I'm down around 30 and we can keep going. This diode can be brought up to you know 15, 20 volts or so. So if I get up to say even like about 12 volts here so at 12 volts I'm down to 8 picofarads. So we can see just by varying the voltage across this varactor diode we can change its capacitance. 
So this is uh, useful in tuning circuits and things like that and a very common use is in uh, voltage controlled oscillators. So I've got an example of that that I built. Let's go take a look at it and see how varying the voltage on the, v on the Varactor diode can change the frequency of oscillation of a voltage controlled oscillator. Okay, so here's our voltage controlled oscillator circuit. A uh, pretty common circuit. This is actually very similar to a design you'll find in chapter 4 of experimental methods in RF design by Wes Hayward. So uh, uh, basically we've got two uh, Varactor diodes here. The bias comes in through this 100K resistor and by using two kind of back-to-back -back here or uh, what we're doing is minimizing the effect of RF from changing the total capacitance that's seen uh, through those diodes. So um, that's what we've got going on here. And so that capacitance combined with the other capacitance in the circuit and this one microhenry inductor uh, basically forms our resonant circuit and, uh, and then the, the amplification to turn it into an oscillator is by this uh, JFET here. And then we've got another JFET uh, you know, uh, source follower as a buffer uh, for the output. This up here is just simple filtering. So as we adjust the control voltage uh, across the diodes, we'll be able to change the frequency of oscillation. So let's go take a look at the, uh, the circuit I built and make some measurements. Okay, so here's uh, the little breadboard I built up and uh, actually laid out very much like the schematic is laid out. Our uh, two JFETs are here. That's the oscillator. That's the buffer. And uh, we could see the various capacitors and resistors. This is that one microhenry inductor. It's just 16 turns on a, a T30-6 toroid. And then these are the two varactor diodes here. So let's go uh, stick this in the vise here and uh, make some measurements. So I've got the, uh, the circuit powered up with about uh, 5 volts or so on uh, uh, for VCC. This connection here is going off to my variable power supply that we're reading over here. You can see it's right now set to about 12.39 volts. And if we look over at the scope, I'm probing the output uh, right here. And we can see the nice sinusoidal output from the oscillator and read its frequency right there, just over uh, 18 megahertz. And if I reach up here and turn the, uh, the bias voltage on the reactors up, we can see I can actually cause that frequency to increase. I can bring that frequency all the way up. Let's see, I can bring this power supply up to about 25 volts. And now we're up to uh, 18.197 megahertz. And if I bring that voltage back down again, I can bring this down to uh, even below 18 megahertz. I can bring it way down to about 17.1 uh, megahertz. So, uh, and of course, by playing with the other vari the other capacitors in the circuit we could change the range that we're looking at here but this is kind of convenient this is actually it would make a a decent uh, VCO for a, uh, a 17 meter uh, QRP transmitter so uh, so there's a you know one example of where a varactor uh, could be quite useful in uh, creating a voltage controlled oscillator anyway I hope you learned a couple things about uh, varactor diodes and uh, how they work and at least one example of how they can be used Thanks again for watching.